Okay, it's a little. What should I say? Hopefully, the camera turns the right direction. Yep. Anyway, so it's the Sabbath, and it's the seventh day of the count to 50. And I'm listening to Guy Fawkes' uh, Book of Matthews. Uh, pretty much. Uh, no, 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 sorry, Guy, not Guy Fox. What am I talking about? Anyway, uh, Fox's books of my Matthews. Uh, guy Fox was all the guy that tried to blow up the English Parliament and all that. Anyway, uh, oh my, again, my brain is, you know, so much information, so many, so many things going on, and uh, I have so many things to do, and yet it's, um, it's a long way to, by the way, you know, doing the best that I can. Uh, I should take a break, but anyway, let's uh, let's look into something. So I have this website. Let's. I was thinking of looking into that because I, you know, some time ago I sorted out all the tabs of one of my browsers, which, you know, every time they update, you know, apparently they went from Firefox to. Uh, Google, Chrome, whatever, in regards to the browser and all that. And I'm not going to go that direction for sure. But anyway, so I have Firefox now as a browser. Um, but there we go. Uh, of course, this is in Danish, which is very annoying. But it says, you know, tupedia.com. My, you know, you know, what do you call it? Post could not uh, share, could, could not be shared. Because the link uh, apparently transgresses the, f you know, the, f what do you call it, fellowship rules. If if you mean that it doesn't, uh, you know, break our, fe you know, fellowship rules, then tell us about it. I have sent for, you know, to them at some point, uh, or last time. Um, but it is, it is it's other, other bullshit, of course, and outrageous as usual. Um, you see the sensor going on and again being banned or censored every day is just, you know, uh, it's just part of the day. Um, so this is the website that they have uh, banned. <laughs> this is the website. It doesn't seem to be any advertising now, of course. I do might have actually some add-ons in regard. Let's turn that off, disable, and let's see. If, uh, if 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 there's any advertising. Well, it looks pretty clean uh, and still looks pretty clean. Um, no advertising. It's very fluently on my mobile. Doesn't seem to have any, you know, you know, bullshit and all that. Just, uh, uh, of course, it has a quotation from Paul. I would take 2 Timothy 1.15 instead. But anyway that all Asia have rejected me. Oh, really? Did all Asia reject you, Roman Pharisee Paulus? Now, I wonder why that could be. Yeah, but anyway, um, and that's not to say that Paul doesn't say things that are true, but you have to be careful because Satan is the craftiest deceiver in the world, you know, and uh, a liar and uh, mixing the truth with the lies and all that. Anyway, uh, Teopedia, Teopedia, and by the way, Asia was the place that Jesus actually wrote the seven, oh, well, actually, John, the apostle, wrote the seven letters to the seven congregations in Asia Minor, the very area that rejected Paulus, and of course, we know Paulus was in, in Ephesus, and that's interesting in regards of the book of Revelation, number two, uh, chapter two, verse two. Oh, pretty much just the whole letter of Ephesus. Oh, actually, pretty much the whole book of Revelation. Or well, the seven letters and the whole book is just exposing the... It's, dis, it's, it's, it's exposing the deceivers. And, of course, that was what Jesus was warning us about in regards to deceivers that could, if possible, deceive the elect. Now, what could deceive the very elect, if possible? Or something that looks like the real thing and quacks like the real thing and walks like the real thing. And yet, it's not the real thing. Anyway, so here we have Teopedia um, in regards of God. Let's see if we can push God. 
God is a triune supreme being, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the sovereign creator and ruler of the universe, the principal object of the Christian faith. From the biblical viewpoint, it is generally agreed that it is impossible to give the strict definition of the idea of God. As from Evangelical Dictionary of Theology. That's the, that's the, you know, I have a problem with people saying that we cannot you know, because it's just a mystery of, ah, God, give me a break. Go read John 14, 15, 16, 17, okay? And don't quit with the, you know, it's it's teaching us in regards to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the twist that people tend to forget, the children of God that has been born by the Spirit of Truth, who testifies in regards of the Son, that leads to the Father, and thereby we have everlasting life even if we die you know so the way to the father uh yeah so you have you know jesus talking about you know i'm the way the truth and the life uh, well it's pretty much already having the trinity uh, there in regards to father son and holy spirit but we tend to forget the twist you know jesus is in regards to the book of revelation talking like Many waters. Now, what does water represent? Uh, it represents people. Now, who is now in Christ? Well, the newborn believers. You know. Oh, yeah. Anyway, uh, arguments for his his for his existence, revelation, redemptive history, knowability, attributes, names, immanence. I have no idea what that is in regards to word, but of course we can look it up maybe. I don't know why this would be banned from Facebook. Well, you know, it's typical persecution of nonsense. The state of being without or not going beyond a given domain. Imminence. Imminence. Presence. Okay. Uh, transcendence. God the Father. The Trinity. Pericoreus. I have no idea what that is either. And apparently it wanted to. Oh, I just want to know. Could we just, you know, there we go. And see here, nope, no definition. There's a lot of big words. Virgin birth, I would agree with that. There's a virgin birth, but she's not an everlasting virgin, as the Roman Catholic pagans say. Uh, you know, wolves and sheep clothing and all that, queen of heaven and all oh, the mother, this and that. I just, oh, there's so many titles in regards to this uh, so-called Mary bullshit. Um, so Ipsi Sima Vux, no idea what that is. Sounds pretty much, this could sound a little like um, hmm, Latin maybe. Ah, uh, come on. Oh, there we go. Copy. And uh, I have no idea what it means. And of course, it might actually, let's try this. But yeah, just interesting. Why would Facebooks, uh, you know, try to... I don't know, That's, this is, uh, no, anyway, I don't know. This is another word, I don't know, relating to the same side. I don't think it's the same as uh, ips, ipsissima vox. It sounds a little like Latin. Yeah, a Latin expression meaning the very voice. Ah, we don't like, you know, a Protestant, you know, as I, as I see, a Protestant would go away from Latin. Over, you know, I hate Latin. If I can get away from Latin, now, of course, it's not, you know, it's impossible to get, you know, totally away from it. But if I can, I will, you know, you know, I, you know, just straight, you know, what you say, go away from Latin, you know, this bullshit uh, Latin, Roman. Uh, anyway, um... Uh, uh, Jesus probably spoke mostly Aramaic, so most of what we have recorded in the Gospels is already a translation. Yeah, that's true. Um, well, that you know that that we already have a translation in regards to the Gospels in regards to the Greek. Now we do have the Aramaic uh, twenty twenty two. No, no, what twenty one of the? No, no. Let's see here. Was it five? Oh yeah, the missing five. So we have. It'll be twenty. No, I can't even remember. Was it 22 books we have in the original in regards to Aram I'm sorry, my brain is uh, it's a little fried, you know, so the information that I usually know, apparently sometimes it just goes away. Sometimes it comes again. Uh, but we have 27 books overall in the New Testament and in the Greek. And I think it's called The Missing Five. So that would be 22 books of the Aramaic. 
Uh, anyway, um, and then we actually have the name of God in regards of Maya, which is the equivalent for Yehovah in Aramaic. Anyway, um, it is interesting, of course, because Jesus is teaching multiple people from outside Israel as well. If I'm, you know, they're coming from different areas. And you have to wonder if he's talking to these people, what language is he talking? Because it seems like the people can understand him. So that's, of course, uh, you know, interesting. But, you know, anyway. Um, of course, we know, you know, we have Hebrew and we have Aramaic, either one of the languages, you know. He, uh, but, yeah. We also have the gospel in Hebrew as well. Um, actually, we have, you know, they found more of, they found all the gospels in Hebrew. It's very interesting. That uh, would be very interesting source to get your, ha you know, one hands on. Now, sadly, the ministry running the information on that, uh, I had a good contact who banned me. Um, I don't understand it, you know. It's just, I don't understand it. Um, they believe that the boat of Noah is in Turkey, which totally goes against what scripture says. Now, I do know that, you know, that is data points in regards of historical information in regards of, of promoting this, but it's just not biblical. Uh, according to the Bible, they came from the east. And if you go east, you don't hit into Turkey, you hit into Iran. And anyway, so that's, I think it's in Iran, but anyway, there was a guy that had been to Iran and all that, and I wanted to, uh, you know, I thought it was a pretty good idea to get on the show and talk about it, you know, whether in agreement or not, I think it would be an, inter you know, very interesting because they actually found something in Iran, which apparently it seems like those natives in the area you know, talked about that that was actually the boat of Noah, other remnants of it anyway. And they have done research in the U.S. in regards of these uh, things that was, what shall we say, uh, taken out of Iran. And uh, I've also talked with the, I uh, probably shouldn't say that. Uh, but anyway, that was very interesting, another confirmation. Um but uh, so it would be interesting to actually talk to um, the Iranians about, you know, something in regards of people, you know, uh, that would be a very interesting way we c could work together in regards. But anyway, whatever. Um, because I would think that a lot of Christians would actually like to. So that could be profitable for Iran and it could be profitable for, you know, uh, uh, for everybody, pretty much. And, of course, then we have Saudi Arabia, which also where we have the mountain of, of um, you know, where, uh, where the Israelites was given the Ten Commandments, uh, you know, written with the finger of God in stone. Uh, and so far with church history, early church, Protestant, oh, we have some problems, Protestant Reformation. I do wonder what this site is, so why... Facebooks would um, would ban them, but of course you have so many, so much sensor in uh, uh, you know, and so much um, banning of you know. And so anyway, Protestant Reformation. The Protestant Ref Reformation was a major 16th century European movement aimed initially at reforming the belief and practices of the Roman Catholic Church, yet it failed. The Reformation failed, of, although people call, you know, talk about the reformed, um, the reformed belief and all that, but it really failed and became a protest. That's so, you know, we are called Protestants because we protest. The Protestants it's just another word for a person protesting against the Antichrist of Rome. You know, the papacy, the papacy, as I call it. You know, but anyway, uh, which a lot of people, so-called Protestants, don't know anything about. So how can they be Protestants if they're not protesting? Because that's the whole idea of being called a Protestant. And that took me some time to figure out as well. And regard, you know, just so much have been hidden away from us in regards to real history, real true history. And there's a mountain of gold of Protestant material from the past. 
Anyway, its religious aspect was supplemented by ambitious political rulers who wanted to extend their power and control at the expense of the church. Oh, wait, 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 wait. This sounds somewhat Roman Catholic in regards of... Um, you know, the Roman Catholics will come and say, oh, yeah, but, you know, they stole away and this and that, and, you know, we're heretics and, you know, for the fire and all, you know. I just talked to a Roman Catholic not long ago, and when you begin to know what they actually believe, they said, you know, the demons just, you know, they just <laughs> manifest, you know. And, you know, one of the, you know, he actually told me a lot of things, you know, he was really on the... You know, I, I, I apparently had stirred him so much up, so he he just went for it, you know, uh, that, you know, in regards of Protestants for the fire and it should be, anyway, um, very, very, you know, yeah, just get it out, you know, I, I, was, I was just sitting there, yeah, I love that. I, I really love when Roman Catholics really just tell you what they really believe, you know, what they really, really think and what they really believe and what, they, yeah, it's just, anyway, um, Instead of trying to deceive you and lie to you, it took it took some time to figure figure things out because uh, because um, you know they are great liars and deceivers. Let's see if we can find the thing here. Oh, here we go. Um, and I write here. This is something I wrote today. I should see if I could find the. Oh, actually, let's just go on my Facebook. It's on my Facebook, so you can see it. Um, but that was actually, I don't know, because I'm testing different uh, inter, uh, internet relay chats, which is IRC, and I'm testing different ones in regards to portables, in regards of my programs, in regards of having, um, you know, having something I can put on my website for people to download, uh, of course, for totally free. I was like a guy that was talking about, you know, hey, you're going to make money on it. It's like, are you kidding me? You know, you know, the truth is and should always be free. It's just incredible. People, money, 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 right? You know, money, money, money. Uh, anyway, so let's see here. Oh, Fox's book of Martius was written by a former Roman Catholic, as far as I can gather. That's actually does some history in regards to the first. You know, I, I've, I've looked into different uh sound books of fox's books of martyrs and um, some of them have this introduction at least one of them uh in regards of i think it up maybe two but anyway uh, at least one uh, has this introduction of for of of the guy which I can't remember what he what was his John Fox or something I can't remember, but anyway uh, he goes to this uh, institution in regards to learning institution, and he begins to study these martyrs that have been killed uh, by the Roman Catholic Church, and they become suspicious of him because he's apparently hauling and sicking in regards of I mean, he's walking this place and all that. And they end up taking him in and asking him, and he confirms that yes, he uh, apparently has. So he's a you know heretic according to the papers, you know. So he gets thrown out, and you know, and so forward. Um, I don't think he was actually, you know, he was he he didn't himself he did not himself become a martyr in regards of dying, but. Um, Apparently, martyr means witness, so he did testify, but not in regard. You know, that's at least some of the. I think also also in regards of a source from from Fox's books of martyrs, I listened a little too, and there's some other editions, and some say that some of the new editions have taken out a lot of the good material and all that. But anyway, so here we go. I should see if I could find the rest of the log. It was kind of interesting confessions he made. Now, okay, I guess I actually get. I get a lot of interesting confessions. It's like when you really hit the the nail, all the trumpets are blowing in some sense. <laughs> you see, when when the demons can't deceive you and you are and you are um, you know totally you know uh, exposing them, uh, the demon seems to manifest and all that. And sometimes they just do, totally go haywire and they just. They get so stirred up, so they just, you know, uh, I think it was yesterday uh, before I got banned. And yesterday I had I had a guy that seemed to be manifesting demons in regards of, 
of internet relay chat and he began to say you know we will eat you and uh, very soon and he just you know he went on a roll on this you know we will eat you we will eat you we will eat you and so forward uh you know and you know all these demonic um things um it's interesting that you know that's apparently okay you know to uh, to um point you know to point out in regards to murder and all that that you know but anyway it seems like it seems like it was demons manifesting in this guy that just you know um so um using him to speak you know or, 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 or and this this thing in regards of uh right on on the internet relay chat but you know i pretty much stirred the whole channel up uh it was you know it's like like uh, kicking a hornet's hornet's nest you know just just wild anyway uh that's part of it uh and i was banned at the i was banned from the channel overall but anyway uh see here this is billy h double v the state has the power of the sword and it is exactly right to wield it against protestants heretics who are at war with god and his church and that's coming from a roman papist now this is not the only thing that he said but I told him, hey, I'm going to quote you on that. Hey, thanks. I'm okay, you know. Um, but he was really on a on a roll, and I should have taken the whole. I sh I could have, you know. I, uh, you know, it's it becomes more obvious how you know you experience these things and what they really believe and. I just love when the Roman papers are coming out of the bushes and just write what they actually believe because they are uh, they're exposing themselves because a lot of people don't know what they actually believe and many times Roman Catholics will lie and deceive you. They can, they can sound very Christian, right? Talk about Jesus and, you know, him being executed on, the, you know, and so forward, but they believe in a cookie they have a false Jesus version in regards to the cookie card. And of course you have the uh, Mary nonsense as well and all that, uh, which as far as I can see, uh, seems to go back to the, the queen of heaven in regards of Inanna. But it's a little hard to, to find all the links here and there, but whatever the case, uh, Mary was not an everlasting virgin and she wasn't born without sin. Um, and she's not in the heavens. Uh, so anyway, she's awaiting the resurrection, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, so that was one of the things. And we have Billy again uh, and me talking here. Uh, but this this is from today. The other thing is from, I guess, yesterday. Or, you know, they really get stirred up, you know. When you really hit the right, when you hit the nail on the head, you know, really hard. Um, they can get really stirred up and you can really see them go into a spin. Anyway, um, so here we have Billy. Imagine observing the, you know, I'm writing Shabbat Shalom and we count seven now for Shavuot. And then Billy says, imagine observing the prefigurement rather than the fulfillment. And he says, insanity. Now, we have to remember that he's a Roman Catholic and he's really into Roman Catholicism. He thinks it okay, it's okay to, to kill off, you know, to murder uh, Protestants because they're heretics, you know. And I, I do really, you know, I like, I, I, I do love them telling the truth, you know, because, <laughs> you know, it's, it's a lot better to have the truth from them to ha than to have all the lies that they are putting forward. So, you know, it's just totally ripping off the sheep clothing from them. But, uh, and I love that. And a lot of the times things get censored. It get, you know, it get remo it gets removed and so forth. I had another, I was on a Facebook group. I think all the Christian groups on Facebook has banned me. So, uh, but anyway, um, one of the groups, I was exposing the Roman Catholics. And lo and behold, three Roman Catholics came out of the bush. And they just made everything worse for themselves. And I was just loving it because it was on their own words. Here the Roman papers came out and they, you know, one of them, 
I ended up posting in regards of Mary and all that. And then uh, one of the other Roman Catholics was rebuking him because that's like, you know, that's like telling Protestants about, uh, what was it called? Uh, in regards of Martin Luther, the 95 Theses against, what was it? Um, against, oh, I can't remember. Um, let's see here, 95 Theses against, oh, I can't remember. You know, this, my memory is not, um, was against, what was, uh, against, I'm sorry. Uh, my brain is not always, uh, again, there's so many things and I'm having a hard thing to, to holding on to everything because there's so, so much. And it just keeps on going and it's like a bottomless hill. Uh, uh, it's a bottomless, uh, you know, Roman Catholicism is like a bottomless, uh, uh, bottomless uh, hole. You know, it just continues and continues and continues. Um, I sh oh, indulgences. So he was rebuking the other Catholic, which seems to be younger in regards to being a Roman papist. And he was rebuking him. And this was a an older Roman Catholic, you know. But And he, and we, he was rebuking the other guy that you shouldn't, you know, in regards to Mary and all that. But of course, that's like telling Protestants about indulgences. And they were just exposing themselves. And I was like, I was I was loving it and I was very close to making a video it was I, I, I had thought that this might be deleted because so many things are getting deleted and censored and removed and so forward so I had put the website you know to the side so if it was deleted so I could you know read it aloud aloud uh, aloud but sadly my computer went into the sleep mode and so and it was deleted and I didn't have the, you know, it, it was re, re taking the information from Facebook and thereby it was, it's interesting how browsers, it's, it's interesting like everything is working against us. It's not working for us, it's working against us. Who said anything in regards to updating? I didn't want to have, no, but let's just update that, right? But in regards to making a website, in regards to updating my site, no, I have to have so many issues with that. Um, it's like someone is out there and of course there's a lot of Roman Catholics and they are led by Satan so and the demons so uh, Shabbat Shalom and we count seven now for Shavuot and Billy says you know a Roman papist imagine observing the prefigurement rather than the fulfillment insanity so I write back to him oh you mean like Jesus did the apostles and Asia Minor for the first plus 300 years since the broken bread on the tree I'm talking about in regards of Jesus kept the festivals the apostles kept the festivals Asia Minor kept the festivals for around the first 300 years um, and you still had people you know so it was the, you know you always had people you know standing for the truth uh, and the Romanized was attacking the truth, you know, uh, fulfilling prophecy in regards to the little horn, the little Roman horn, things to change times and laws and persecutes the saints. Uh, but anyway, uh, sitting on the fourth beast, which is Roman. Jesus is Jehovah, just imagine, okay, so uh, this is me again, just imagine to do as the master did. Just imagine keeping those things prophesied to be kept in the future by scripture. We have, for example, the festival of Sukkot is going to be kept in the future according to the scriptures. Ah, so who are you going to believe? And the Sabbath as well uh, seems to be... Um, so the Sabbath and the festivals of Sukkot is written in regards to being kept in the future uh, in the scriptures. So if that is true, why would anyone think that they are removed? And of course they're not. But anyway, and why is the little horn thinking to change times and laws? Well, maybe because God's law is still standing. And of course, when we see Jesus uh, rejecting people that says, Lord, Lord, haven't we done wonderful, um, you know, works in your name and driven out demons in your name and prophesied in your name? And what does Jesus say to them? I never knew you. You know, um, begone, what was it, like, uh, I never knew you depart from me, ye that work iniquity or lawlessness, or you that are without law, in regards to the Greek, anomus, a meaning no or not, and nomos meaning law, 
you then of which law is Jesus talking about? You know, you think it's the Roman law or maybe the law that he kept in regards of Jehovah, in regards of the law of Moses. Anyway, uh, and of course, the first and highest commandment is to love God with all your heart and soul and being. So if Jesus is God Almighty, you, of course, that's a command to love him uh, and not hate him, right? So anyway, um, so if you keep the law, you will be lead, you will be led to salvation. Uh, anyway, Billy H. Double V. Filth. Oh, that's me writing to him. Filthy papers to runs and loves a lie, or worship the devil and murder the saints in the name of God. And then he says, "You are having trouble understanding the concept of the new covenant. Covenant, aren't you?" And I say, I, told, told, I wrote to him, "You are bl you are blind as a mole." Oh, is it mole, a mole, mole? I think it's a mole in regards to the animal I'm thinking of, in regards of a mole, not a mole, but a mold. A mole? Yeah, a mole. I think it's a, let's see, mole. And not mold. But yeah, 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 it's a mole. And um, anyway, um, so you're blind as, and there's an unclean animal, by the way, so no eating of that. Rejecting the truth, you love the lie. Okay, you're blind as a mole. Rejecting the truth, you love the lie. The cookies, the, the idols and images while worshipping that old snake, the devil. You bow before the beast of the number 666 while worshipping the dragon. Uh, and this should have been in red. But anyway, ye indeed fulfilled the scriptures, the little... The little blasphemous and clever Roman horn who uses its wits for evil and things to change times and laws and who persecutes the saints. Ferocious and ready to rip up the saints, hiding behind your sheep clothing and sweet ecumenical words. Your hunger for blood and readying the claws to scratch and, and teeth to rip us up. Murderers of saints, liars and idolaters, full of evil intentions. He who leads people to their death and to bow down to that puppet of the devil in Rome. You know, the ferocious wolves. Um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much, I guess, that's... Uh, and we have in regards to the false witness. I had I had contact with one false witness. And that would be in regards of they call themselves Jehovah's Witnesses, which is kind of ironic as they do everything in their power to deny him and sow doubt in people reading their Bible and correctly understanding it. But anyway, but after they exploded twice at me while we sat and talked uh, at two different meetings, I found no value to continue in any way. Just wasting my time putting pearls on the table for him to defile and puke all over and throw back in my face. I learned that the false witnesses are trained to deny Jesus, God Almighty, Jehovah, in every, in any and every way. Uh, what other nonsense and demonic filth, even being told it is blasphemy to proclaim, proclaim him such. And, uh, you know, I've heard this, um, you know, multiple times, at least twice. Um, See, I remember it dawned on me how far they are willing to go, reading a document of Melito from the second century, directly saying Jesus is God, directly and indirectly in so many ways, on so many levels. And the false witness could not even accept that he said so. And he and told me he did not say that Jesus was God, while I was clearly doing exactly that. The dishonesty you need to pull forth to not see what plainly was on the paper with Melito's words. You might not accept what he thinks or points out or agree to it, but to willingly say he does not say so is just outrageous. And, you know, there's so many things I put forward and uh, did research in regards of... Uh, because I got in contact with my primary uh, false witness. Um, he, you know, he contacted me at... Uh, at, uh, at a shop. Uh, I was out shopping and I had my bag with the name of God and all that anyway. So we were talking and we, yeah, it was pretty good and all that, no problem with that. And so we met here and there in regards to things. Oh, that's a Roman papist. Oh yeah, just right there on the image. Um, 
But anyway, um, so I found out that Jesus was God. I was reading the New Testament one Sabbath, and uh, I'm pretty sure it was a Sabbath. But anyway, I was reading, I was reading the New Testament, and I found out that Jesus was God, and I just began to see it everywhere, you know. And uh, I was just in the heavens, pretty much. Um, I think it took me around a year of studying the New Testament uh, to realize that Jesus was God. So I had a meeting with this guy, and there was another um, as well. And I was like, oh, cow. I was like, hey, I found out that Jesus is God, you know? I was just really... And they just looked at me like I'd, I had, you know, said something very wrong, you know, or had seen a ghost, you know? And then the battle began, you know, um, and they were, you know, the guy tried to do anything and everything to, to try to give me a wig. You know, the thing is, it, it always came around to this, you know, it always came around to this in regards of this doctrine, if Jesus was God or not. It's just, even if we want, you know, it, it's just, we were hanging on that very point. It was just, and the more you know the gap was just widening and widening more and more anyway but I, I i found out how dishonest it was you know um i even had him say that yes that is what jesus says and in regards to the book of revelation and he's you know saying the exact same thing as god almighty and he even accepted that what was you know that jesus was using the same title as god almighty and and yet he couldn't, you know, okay, so Jesus is using the same title as, you know, God Almighty is using. So if Jesus is using that same title, he must either be God or he's going into blasphemy, right? But, and, you know, um, and of course the Jews did understand, you know, the whole thing does, the whole thing collapses if you, if you deny that Jesus is God, you know, everything collapses. There's, there's not, no sensibility anymore. Um, because he was executed because he made himself into God. You know, he was, he was executed for blasphemy because the Jews know that he being a man made him into himself into God. They know it to this very day. So everything just falls apart if you, if you, you know, history, the Bible on so many levels, it's just everything falls apart if you deny that uh, when you, when you are, anyway. Um, so I was doing some research in regards to the New Jerusalem and all that uh, while reading the book of Revelation. So on the last day of the, you know, I sadly I didn't have any other colors on Facebook apparently. And then, you know, the so um, I would have rather used some other colors. But anyway, the Babylonian colors for royal ship. Uh, uh, the Daniel was clothed in. Uh, royal purple i think it was but anyway and of course you have the roman papist in regards of being clothed in purple and red and so forward so in regards of the bishops and the cardinals or the cardinals and the bishops you know the cardinals are higher than the bishops you know and it's as i understand it is a form of i don't know any everything in regards to roman catholicism and i don't really you know it's I'm trying to keep away from all the pagan bullshit, and yet I'm seemingly, you know, it's just, I, you know, I don't want to, and yet it's, it's, it's nice to know the truth, what they really believe, and I'm just so tired that they are, you know, saying it's Christianity when it's all pagan bullshit, you know, and they're just disguising themselves in Christianity uh, uh, in cheap clothing, and yet they are, but anyway, let's go back to the Topedia and see. Uh, I, you know, Facebook apparently has banned it. You you cannot post it on the. And of course, they have made all these things. If you open up a page from Facebook, you have all this insanity thing where they add it to the link. So a perfectly good link becomes a perfectly confusing uh, link instead and then of course it breaks things as well when you're on the internet it all just becomes more and more full of nonsense in this world 
and they're taking the power from the people to the companies that have the money to you know hire you know uh, hire people to that knows how to get around the nonsense and you know programmers web script developers and all that you have multiple browsers which give multiple results in regards to web pages um it's just it's 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 just so full of nonsense um so i was actually looking for a html tutorial that i remember i had in the past and sadly deleted it because i you know in regards i didn't really get it on a legal mean and so forward uh, uh so um so um i deleted it sadly but i i re but that was like where the person had fixed so every single browser you know should actually show it uh, as the same so he had like a big css file where you have all the uh style of the web page and apparently he had fixed all of the things so every single browser would you know show the same thing uh with that kind of anyway so the protestant reformation the protestant reformation was a major 16th century european movement aimed initially at the reform at reforming the belief and practices of the roman catholic church and that's initial initially it was in regards to reforming the roman catholic church that the roman catholic church are not interesting to be reformed in the direction of truth because it is the hall of revelation the harlot um, and she has always been here before Jesus actually was revealed in regards to 2,000 years ago. As far as I can see, she was riding all seven heads in regards of the beast. And that city is the city that rules over the kings of the world, which is Rome. And But she was already there, there from the beginning of the conce conception of Rome. Uh, I had a source from Wikipedia in regards of the Pontifex Maximus, in regards of him giving his orders or rules already at the where the second king of Rome is. So the Pontifex Maximus, which today is the is the so-called Pope, uh, he is the Pontifex Maximus today. Constantine was the Pontifex Maximus in regards of sun worship, in regards of Sol Invictus, the unconquerable sun god, you know, in regards of the sun, yes, U-N, the solar god, not the sun, in regards of God's uh, sun. Um, so... Anyway, so that's a lot of... But anyway, apparently Pontifex Maximus, the title goes back to uh, the first head of the beast, you know. And so anyway, that's that's well, the first mountain um, of the seven mountains. And of course, now we are at the eighth and the eighth is one of the seven. And personally, I think it's the sixth head, but it could be one of the others. Could maybe also be the first. But in any case, I haven't, you know, I haven't nailed everything um, to, uh, it's actually a bad expression, I guess. But I haven't figured everything out, but I've figured enough to, but in any case, um, its religious aspects were supplemented by ambitious, ambitious political rulers, and it is today as well, um, who wanted to extend their power and control at the expense of the church. The Reformation, Reformation into the unity imposed by medieval Christianity and in the eyes of many historians signaled the beginning of the modern era. You see, we, we have people pulling rope from Satan. And sadly, it seems like here in Denmark that we just pulled a little and then stopped from there. Um, so we still have a lot of things that we should fix. 500 years you know later and we it's 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 really shameful because we have had the bible you know every danish person i think uh has a bible in the shelf you know mo most most of the people have a bible in on the shelf and yet it just stands there collecting dust and then we have these preachers in the lutheran churches who can't even speak about who the antichrist is anymore and just go haywire on so many you know it's just or roll, roll, roll the boat, you know, it's just merrily, merrily, you know, just get along to go along and all that bullshit. 
uh, weakening, uh, and so many other things. It's just really, 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 um, we are in really bad shape. Because no one pulls rope from Satan, no one dares to stand up and you know tell this is this is this is an abomination, you know, this is bullshit, and you know get get out get it out, you know. Anyway, uh, weakening of the old order was already underway in Northern Europe, as evidenced by the emergence of thriving new uh, thriving new cities cities and the determined middle class. In 1517, in one of the signal events of Western history, Martin Luther, a German Augustanian monk, posted 95 theses on the church door in the university town of Wittenberg. That act was common academic practice of the day and served as an invitation to debate. Luther's propositions challenged some portions of Roman Catholic doctrine and a number of specific practices. Actually, it was really, you know, when you read the 95 Theses of Martin Luther, they were really, really, uh, he really, he really stirred up some, uh, some, some things, that's for sure, with that document. Um... Anyway, the movement quickly gained adherence in the German states. The Netherlands, Scandinavia, Scotland and portions of France support, from, support came from sincere religious reformers, while others manipulated the movement to gain control of valuable church property. Now, now when the Roman Catholics are coming and saying that, you know, that, that people just did it to, to uh, steal property from the church, well, I have to ask you, where did the church get that property from? Hmm? You know, if you could kill a heretic, you know, you could get the property and all that. You know, it was, it's, it's a filthy institution. And in regards of the property, for example, in Denmark, Martin Luther writes to the Danish king in regards of what to do with it. And it is in regards of using it to, uh, you know, it's not just having it for himself. It is to use it i can't remember the whole uh, but you know when, when roman catholics are saying oh it's just because they wanted to to steal land from from the roman uh, catholic uh, insane institution they are really 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 light on truth you know and the same thing goes with um when they say oh the protestants this this and that and all that well you know when, if you have beaten and beaten and beaten and beaten people over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, and then they rebel at, at you, and then you point at them, see what they did, see what they did. Oh, they did this and that. Isn't that pretty hypocritical? Because they woke up and they... Did some, you know, they did some things that, you know, was, but, but uh, wasn't so good, you know. So, you know, but you have to remember where they're coming from, and you have to remember that they were beginning, they were former Roman Catholics. So, what they have grown up with was the Roman Catholic way, and there was a lot of leaven in them still. But anyway, so 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 when Roman Catholics are pointing that out, just remember that the Roman Catholic persecuted the truth for hundreds and hundreds, and still do it, and still do it. hundreds of years. They persecuted the the people. They burned the, the 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 people. They burned the documents. They didn't want the people to read the Bible. That is Roman Catholicism. They are not Christians. Anyway. Um, <laughs> In any case, so so the Roman Catholics will flip everything around, and it's 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 very sad. It's you know they're flipping things upside down and uh, turning, and uh, yeah. Anyway, but the more you begin to learn about the truth, the easier it is to discount their bullshit lies and deceptions. The term Protestants was not initially applied to the reformers, but later was used to describe all groups protesting Roman Catholic orthodoxy. Protestant, the Protestant religion was in regards of, you know, there might be many different groups of Protestants, but there was a whole of the Protestant religion who protested the Antichrist. Um, and we have totally forgotten that. And of course, the, the, the Jesuits, the special soldiers of Satan, has been out there to, um, 
you know, to make conflict between uh, Protestant groups and uh, stir things up and, of course, try to, which has been very successful, actually getting us back to the Roman Catholic Church. And then, the Ro you know, the Roman Catholics going out and the stirring things up in regards of, you know, getting Protestants against Protestants and all that. And then they will say, oh, look at that. There's so many nominations and this and that. Oh, you know, you need to get back to the Roman Catholic bullshit institution and all that. Um, just, you know, these people, this system is Satan's, you know, craft, you know, most crafty work of deception. It is his masterpiece. So, um, Anyway, as the whole, in regards to the Jesuits, go read the Jesuit oath if you want to know how they how they are working, and that's material on the Jesuits as well out there. And again, we don't know much, but the, you know, in our days, but the material is out there. So it's just let's get on and figure out what is actually going on. And um, we have been kept away from real Protestant history, and we have pretty much become ignorant of the past. And they have substituted it with their Roman version of history. And uh, we, are, we are learning a lot of bullshit. And we are ignorant of history. You know. So uh, anyway, um, as the hope of reforming the Roman church faded, the Protestants were forced to separate from Roman Catholicism, resulting in Lutheran churches in Germany, Scandinavia, and some Eastern European countries. Uh, the Reformed Churches in Switzerland and the Netherlands, Presbyterian Churches in Scotland and the Angelic Anglican Church in England and other diverse elements of which have evolved into the Protestant denominations of today. So why would Facebook's, uh, you know, ban this website? Hmm, maybe, maybe because there's too much truth on the web page? I don't know, but... Uh, uh, precursors to the Reformation. Here we have John Wycliffe. And then we have Jan Haas. Um, you know, and John Wycliffe, they digged up his bones and, you know, that's it's just, it's just a disgusting system, you know. Precursors to the Reformation, John Wycliffe, 1330 to 84, attacked what he saw as corruption within the church, including the sale of indulgences, and John Haas, as far as I understand it, also did that, but pilgrimages, the excessive veneration of saints, and the low moral and intellectual standard of ordained priest. Wycliffe also repudiated the doctrine of transubstantiation, held that the Bible was the sole standard of Christian doctrine, and argued that the authority of the Pope was not grounded in Scripture. Some of Wycliffe's early followers translated the Bible into English, while later followers, known as Lollards, held that the Bible was the sole authority and that Christians were called upon to interpretate the Bible for themselves. The Lollards also argued against clerical celibacy, transubstantiation, mandatory oral confession, pilgrimage, and indulgences. There we go. Um, you see, Protestants has always been in the world. And the Roman Catholics are like, oh no, this heresy is now growing up again. Well, if that heresy is growing up again and again and again and again, maybe it's because people are reading the Bible and figuring the same things out again and again and again. Oh, well, just, but they call it heresy. But the, the only heresy, you know, the real heresy is actually the people actually calling other heresies, you know, heretics, you know. So it's Roman Catholicism that is the heresy. Mm. Persecuting the saints. And we have Jan, Jan, uh, Jan Haas. I don't know why they... The problem is when you call it John Whitecliffe and, and John Haas, we have a... You know, it gets confusing. As far as I know, it's John Whitecliffe is the English name. Um, and if I figure out something that it's, you know, uh, I will change it, of course. But John Whitecliffe is the, the real name uh, in English, as far as I know. And then we have Jan Haas is the name of him, not John Haas. John Haas, John is, is an English um, form of it, I get, but, but yeah, he was named Jan Haas. So, well, of course, we're all going to use their own names. And it also makes it a lot easier than having two of the same names. 
a Bohemian priest excommunicated in 1410 and burned at the stake for heresy in 1415. His death led to the Hussite Wars in Bohemia. Huss followed Wycliffe's teaching close, closely, translating Wycliffe's trilogics into Sikoslovikian. I don't know if I'm saying that. Um, translating Wycliffe's trilogus. I don't know what why. You know, it would be interesting at some point, of course, to you know. But so much information out there that's interesting to uh, read. You know, it's um, but. Um, and we go with the Trialocus by John Wycliffe. Again, um, I guess this must be his book. Um, known for translating the Vulgate Bible. Yeah, he translated the Latin version into the common language of English. And they were persecuted, you know. Anyway, uh, here we go. Wycliffe's Trialocus, discussing divine power and knowledge, creation, virtues and vices, the incarnation, redemption and the sacraments. In co it consists of a three-way conversion, which Wycliffe wrote to familiarize priest and lay folk, folk with the complex issues underlying Christian doctrine uh, and begins with the formal philosophic, philosophical Theology, which moves into moral theology, concluding with the searing critique of the 14th century ecclesiastical status quo. Stephen Leahy provide a complete English translation of all four books and the supplement to the Triology, which, which will be a valuable resource for scholars and stu students currently relying, relying on selective translated extracts. Um, well, anyway, you just, you know, you, when you begin to go into these sources, you begin to clash with the Roman Catholics and the Catholics will come out and say, this is hate speech or this is not true. And this is this, and this is that they use all the deceptive demonic bullshit, uh, um, bullshit, uh, ways of trying to get things censored. To, to try to get things, you know, removed, uh, banned, uh, you know, pretty much they're still going around and bur bur burning books, you know, just on the internet um, and making a lot of difficulties for us. And yet people have fallen asleep. So they, you know, so they don't know, uh, you know, just because many people are saying something doesn't mean it's the way to go, you know. Just because, you know, and that's the, the same thing that the Roman Catholics are using, the, the Mohammedans are using the trick as well. For example, um, to get in a group and then, uh, and then what shall we say, a uh, group together and to, what is it called? Um, you know, when you can, um, you can fix something to an administrator, you know. Uh, what do you call, what, what is that called? And then when you have people that are leftists, you know, that don't believe in God, that are promoters of murder on the weakest in regards to children, haters of God and so forward. When you have those that controls the things that people are reporting, that's the name, you know, when you have like a group that reports a lot, you know, they get together, the Mohammedans or the Roman Catholics report something, you know, hate speech or, you know, it's offending or whatever, you know, and, and then they report it. And then you have, uh, have someone that hates God, you know, it's just all, you know, all these people working together to, 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 uh, to, uh, yeah, to destroy the truth. And that's why feminists and Mohammedans also can work together because they're working for the same, uh, they're working for the same uh, Lord in some sense. They're working for Satan. Even if it looks like, how is it that feminists and Mohammedans can go long, along, you know, go along, you know, you know, when you see it sometimes, well, it's because they're working for the same, the same, um, you know, um, they're working for the same uh, chief, you know, I think might be a pretty good work or the same boss, you know, they're working for Satan. So even if they seem to be, you know, or should be far apart from each other, right? And yet, no, no, you can see them. Uh, you can see interesting things sometimes in regards to these two groups. 
Um, where did we go? Let's go back to Teopedia. So a Bohemian priest excommunicate. Now we pray already. Okay. And modeling the first 10 chapters of his own, the Ecclesia, after Wycliffe's writing, he believed in priest destination, regarded the Bible as the ultimate religious authority, and argued that Christ, rather than any ecclesiastical official, and that would be in regards, I guess, Roman Catholics, priest, and, you know, um, uh, agents, you know, um, bishops and cardinals and all that, uh, all the great stinking poop, you know, uh, then, then any ecclesiastical official is the true head of the church. And amen, Christ is the true head, head of the church. But of course, Satan wants to be the true head of, the, you know, he wants to be God, you know. Um, prominent, 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 prominent figures in Reformation, Martin Luther, so we have Martin Luther in 1570 nails the, his 55 theses onto a Wittenberg church door. These theses uh, were Latin prepositions opposing the man on which the indulgences released from the temporal penalties for sin through the payment of money were being sold in order to raise money for the building of St. Peter's in Rome. You know, the great air. We have Huldrych Swingley. Now, Holdrick Stringley uh, was actually had a meeting with Martin Luther, and the idea was actually to get together with the Luther, you know, that both of the groups could get together. And uh, there was one main thing that uh, kept them apart and uh, where they couldn't agree. And Luther was wrong, you know. Of course, Holdrick Swingley also have issues in regards of, as far as I can gather, uh, Mariolatry or, you know, Mary bullshit. And he had a colleague as well. And they seem to have uh, seen both of them as far as I could read. You know, I want to have to be careful, but uh, it seems they, they were still into uh, Mary, you know, uh, worship. Um, but that's something I need to study more. But the thing is, Holdrick Swingley did not believe in the cookie Jesus. Now, the students of Huldrych Swingley in regards of the people known as the Anabaptist um, did not believe in the cookie and they did not uh, run, you know, in regards of Mary bullshit and all that. So I think they actually came closer as far as I know. Uh, they. So I'm, I still have a lot to learn. So if I make a mistake, I'm sorry. Uh, it's the best that I can do on what I have for now in regards to studying these things. But anyway, Hardrick Swingley, you know, uh, Swiss theologian and leader of early Reformation movement in Switzerland, vigorously uh, denounces the sale of indulgences in 1518. So Martin Luther in 1517 and apparently Hardrick Swingley in 1518. But Hardrick Swingley, I think, uh, seems to be doing a little of the same as Martin Luther, where they take it so far to that point and then stops, you know, in some sense. Um, and Andreas Karlstadt is kicked out of Wittenberg, as far as I can gather, it's Martin Luther, that actually gets him kicked out. Uh, and Andreas Karlstadt was running thing in Wittenberg uh, while Luther was in hideout. Um, so, but Martin Luther is really coming back like a snake in some sense. Uh, it's just so much snake oil. When you read the letters in regards to how he actually gets into his power position again in Wittenberg, he's snake oiling in regards of, yeah, it's true what Karlstadt and the others have done and so forward. But, you know, we shouldn't, you know, because of the weak people, you know, go so quickly. And so he's, he's confirming that, yes, what Karlstadt and the others have done is true. It's correct and all that. But we shouldn't go so quickly because of the weekend. You know, uh, it's very snaky. It's very um, slick and uh, it's very sad to see. But anyway, so, um, but Martin Luther did translate the whole Bible and he did want the people to read the Bible and all that. But he had mistakes as any other. But we still have to remember that these people are coming out of the Roman Catholic institution and they had grown up in this system so it it's not always easy to to you know release every um, everything that you have grown up with 
Uh, so you have to, you know, we have to take that into consideration that they were beginning to hew row from Satan, but that is not to say that they didn't have that 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 they they didn't have any issues them, you know. But you can find issues in every kind of, and the Roman Catholics will, you know, try to the to the best and say this and that, and a lot of times they do it dishonestly um, and just slander. Uh, you know, Martin Luther was always already slandered before he died. You know, in regards of he was sitting and reading them telling that he had died. You know, <laughs> but he, uh, he was alive. Um, and then uh, you know, you can see different stories of Martin Luther. And as far as I could see from the Protestants, they knew they would try to slander Martin Luther, so they documented in regards to how he died and his last words and so forward. Uh, of course, in regards to Martin Luther, he could have been poisoned, you know, um, which I think is a, is a, I don't know if we have the um, bones of Martin Luther, if anyone could actually check those bones for poison, you know, but I think there would be a chance that he probably would, you know, could have been poisoned, you know, that, I, I wouldn't rule out the, um, I wouldn't rule out that, um, that possibility. It might have been some of the first things that the Jesuits was was given of task to do. I don't know, but anyway. Um, but that's one of the metho methods because they think it's okay to kill people, you know, uh, if they're against the so-called holy institution, right? Well, unholy, but anyway. You just need to put the U and the N in front of it every time Roman Catholics say holy, and you, you're a lot closer to the truth. Anyway, John Calvin, I don't know much about John, John Calvin overall, and, you know, just, and of course the important thing is to read the Bible, but anyway, John Calvin, I think the Puritans came out of, of uh, John Calvin, uh, of that, that kind of, uh, anyway, 1509 to 64, Calvin was a French theologian and reformer who fled religious persecution in, in France and settled in Geneva. And there we go with the Geneva Bible, uh, which had a lot of damaging information as side notes. And uh, later those side notes was taken out in regards of, of the King James Version and all that. Uh, that's a lot of things going on. And I'm... I remember a source that said that the Geneva Bible was actually made illegal and thereby you could only buy the King James Version, which is, of course, interesting. You know, um, why would anyone do that, you know? Um, and that was something in regards of King James wanted the, he wanted the, the footnotes out of, you know, so out of the, the Bible. Uh, which is interesting why he would, you know, want that, you know. Uh, but anyway, um, there's some really interesting uh, notes in regards to Geneva notes for sure. How the Protestants was, you know, f looking at things. 1530, you know, people that actually took it seriously and knew who the Antichrist was and actually wanted to study scripture and not wanted to, you know, uh, but anyway, 1536, he instituted a form of church government in Geneva, which has become known as the Presbyterian Church. He insisted on reforms, including the congregational singing of the Psalms as part of church worship, the teaching of, of uh, catechism and confession of faith to children, and the enforcement of strict moral discipline in the community by the pastors and members of the church. Geneva was under Calvin essentially a uh, theocracy uh, as a government in regards to, uh, and I guess biblical, you know, we always... You know, the Israelites always had God, right? Uh, a political unit governed by a deity or by officials to be divinely guided. And of course, God is the king, right? Um, you know, God is talking about in regards of Israel when he gave them a king. He said, "He, I gave you a king in my anger, you know. And he talks about them, you know, they haven't, you know, in regards of uh, the prophet, 
and he talks to the prophet and he says they haven't rejected you they, you know, they have rejected me of oh, I, just, I can't remember the details of all but you know God you know um, um, that was to Samuel I think Samuel you know that's some but anyway so he gives them a king in his anger you know they um, so but anyway um, so John Knox you know because he sees it as that they have rejected him, you know, um, as king, you know, God. John Knox, uh, a really, really interesting person as well. Um, and it's just like, oh, why don't we know these things? Why is it that there's no programs in the television about these things? Why is it that we don't hear anything about it pretty much? Um, John Knox, 1513 to 1572, an ardent disciple of Calvin, you know, and maybe we don't hear about these things because the media is ruled by Roman papists. So, you know, there are, there are so many different groups out there working for the papacy under many, many different names. And uh, so, anyway, um, in regards of the media, as I understand it, that was, that was a group that that uh, Alberto Rivera was also talking about. That was, uh, and he actually told what the meaning of the Latin was. And of course, it's interesting because I think I don't think internet was around at that time, and he knew so much. and And we can check it very, you know, pretty easy in our days. And um, but there were, I don't think there was internet when he was around. One have to remember that. Uh, I don't think there was, and thereby he knew a huge amount. And it's like, you know, how could he know all these things if he wasn't either a former Jesuit or still a Jesuit trying to deceive, you know? Um, because that guy knew, you know, when the Roman Catholic says that he's just a liar and this and that, you really have to be aware because, you know, um, he might actually be truthfully telling the truth. Of so many things that I didn't know when I read uh, him first time, and so many things I have verified after, you know. So he was telling, you know, many things that seemed so extraordinary, and he was telling the truth, and you couldn't just, just like, you know, you get to, you know, this, you know, it's telling this these these extraordinary things, you know, where you're just thinking, hmm, you know. I don't know, but you know, I have no idea. You know, I have no idea. You know, it just goes right over your head in some sense. And then down the years, when you do study and you find out he was telling the truth about this and that and so forward, you know, um, yeah. Anyway, and then you see the Roman Catholics calling him a liar and trying to discount him and so forward. Anyway, uh, Obus Day, that was the name. Um, and Alberto Rivera talked about Obus Deis, which means in regards to doing God's work or something like that in Latin. And I have another source, I remember a Seventh-day Adventist source that talks about that the Obus Dei are the group that controls the media. Now, that was from a U.S. citizen, I think. So, um, I don't know how it is in, uh, in my nation. Uh, it seems like the Freemasons are used to, um, it's interesting with this royal thing as well, because it's rotten. It's totally rotten overall, even if, even if the queen says she's stemming from, you know, past, a past king, she's still a woman. And kingship is not going through a woman, it's going through a man. You know, so anyway, it's, it's, um, it's all... So many things in regards to England, for example, where they chose uh, first a woman and she was, what was it, like nine days or something like that, the nine day queen or something like that, I can't remember. Um, I think it was the nine day queen or something like that. Um, and she was um, killed. And then uh, Bloody Mary took over, I think it was. But the thing is, they didn't, they they were the king before that was trying to find a king. They didn't they didn't want a, a woman, which uh, you know it's. Uh, uh, but they how how they could overlook look the obvious to find a king. It would should have been pretty easy to find them the 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 royal king that should have been the next in line. 
They just need to go backward in regards of the tree instead of forward. Because if you don't have a male inheritance, well, you go, you know, backward. You know, you don't go forward, you go backward and you find the next to the kingly line. It doesn't go through a woman, you know. It's always gone through the male, you know. You look at Jesus, right? In regards of, you know, from Adam to this guy, to this guy, to this guy, to this guy. This is all men. Only the last one is a woman. In regards of being born of Mary. Every single, you just look at it in regards of um, of the book of Matthew. And you can see it many, many places in the Bible. It's going through the male. It doesn't matter where the woman is coming from. The children are, uh, are becoming what the man is. So if I marry a woman from India, uh, for, uh, you know, an Indian woman or, or, or a Jew or whatever, it doesn't, you know, my children will then become, you know, the nationality of, of what I am. It doesn't matter where the children is born either. Um, it's all, you know, we just totally bullshit in this world. You know, we don't know anything, you know, it's, we just lost all of sanity. Here we go. The book of genealogy. We can probably there we go. The book of genealogy of Yeshua, the Messiah, son of David, son of Abraham. Abraham brought forth Yitzchak. Yitzchak brought forth Yaakov, and Yaakov brought forth Yehuda, and his brothers. And Yehuda brought forth Peretz and Peretz. Oh, uh, sorry, for Peretz and Serach. By Tamar and Peretz brought forth, and Tamar is a woman. So that's, but anyway, but that's still, still man, but it just talks about, you know, the, by Tamar. And Peretz brought forth Chetzron, and Chetzron brought forth Ram, and Ram brought forth Ami, Aminadav, and Amidav brought forth Nachshon, and Nachshon brought forth Salmon, and Salmon brought forth Boaz by Rechav. And that would be again a woman in regards to Rahav. And Boaz brought forth Ovid by Ruth. And Ruth is another woman. But again, you see, it's the main 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 thing is the man. And Ovid brought forth Yitzchai. Yitzchai? Yitzchai? Uh, I, I was I thought it would be Yitzchai. And Yitzchai brought forth David the sovereign. And David the sovereign brought forth Shalomo. By Uriah's wife, and there we go with the. So you, you see them pointing out in regards to some of these women that was, you know. Um, but anyway, but this goes through the man, and Shalomo brought forth uh, Rehav Am. I'm not sure what that's. Uh, his mother was an Amorite. Oh, okay. Interesting. I guess. So I guess it's, you know, it's again showing these different mothers and where the mothers are from. But again, you see that it goes through the man. So apparently she was a ammo, right? Um, Ruth was, again, not a Jew. And uh, she was, she was from, but again, the children are Jews, you know, because it goes through the man. Uh, I think Tamar was not a Jew either. And yet still, these other people, you know, is David, you know, is, is David a Jew? Yes, yeah, David is a Jew. He's an Israelite, you know. Um, so they're still considered Jews, even if the mother is, you know, coming, you know, is not a Jew. The sovereign brought forth Shalomo by Uriah's wife. And... I think Uriah might have been a Jew, actually. I think, um, but anyway, uh, but anyway, it goes on. And Asa brought forth Yehoshaphat, and Yehoshaphat brought forth Yoram, and Yoram brought forth Uzziah, and Uzziah brought forth Yotam, and Yotam brought forth Haras, and Haras brought forth Rizkiyahu. Uh, do you still wonder in regards to the other thing if that is correct in regards to the Hebrew? In regards of, um, I'm sorry, I'm just, you know, I just so, sometimes things just uh, annoys me or, you know, I, just, I want to know. Um, let's have a look in, I don't know, if, I don't think I have it in, in uh, 
I don't think I have a Hebrew translation, sadly. Um, oh well. Well, a Greek probably should be able to find it in the in the so-called Old Testament. Um, if I find the Greek and I can search in, in the Greek and that has the Old Testament, I can find the Hebrew then. Uh, that might be a way to do it. Um, but uh, yeah. Oh, let's try that. Bible. Oh, no, that's that's wrong. Anyway, uh, I would just thought, I would have thought that a yes, Yishai would be Rai, Yishai, you know, in regards of life and not a Yishai. Uh, you know, more high, you know, life. But uh, I maybe I mean, I'm, I might be totally wrong here. I need to check that out at some point. And I saw brought forth Sadak, and Sadak brought forth Akim, and Akim brought forth Elihud, and Elihud brought forth Eleazar, and Eleazar brought forth Matan, and Matan brought forth Yaakov, and Yaakov brought forth Yosef, and the husband of Miriam. Actually, it says the husband of Miriam. Of whom was bought? No, no. Yeah, well, hey, anyway, that might be a problem in regards of the translation there. But anyway, you see, everything goes through the man. It doesn't matter in regards of the woman in regards of... Uh, so, um, it's through the man. Until the very last step in regards of being born of a woman, because Mary herself or Mayam is... Mayam is uh, a, a daughter of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, you know, she's a Jew, you know. So, anyway, let's get back to it. Um, so, and uh, John Knox, an ardent disciple of Calvin, Knox established Calvinistic Protestantism as a national religion of Scotland, and he left a powerful political legacy within the Calvinist or Reformed branch of Protestantism, a political legacy known as Presbyterianism. And so forward, we have uh, King Henry VIII, also in regards of, um, yeah, that's, um, I have a movie in regards, but anyway, theological issues of the Reformation, here we, the theology of Reformation departed from the Roman Catholic Church primarily on the basis of three great principles, sole authority of scripture, justification by faith alone, and priesthood of the believer. Now, in regards to justification by faith alone, we still have in regards to works, you know, uh, you cannot deny the works, uh, and of course, Martin Luther, um, you know, he grew as anyone else. So when Roman Catholics are quoting Martin Luther, you have to ask the question, when did Martin Luther write this? Because he himself knew he had issues in his younger years. He writes that. Um, so, but anyway. Um, so you have to remember, when is Martin Luther quoted for saying that? Because, you know, people could go to my Facebook and they could just take some of my things when I was in the New Age or the occult and say, hey, see, he's a pagan, you know. <laughs> but that's many years ago when I was into that. And, uh, you know, uh, and I regard to believing some things that I found out, uh oh, this is wrong. And thereby, uh, you know, that was one uh, Roman Catholics uh, that deceived me in regards to the direct, you know, getting me away from what scripture was saying. But by reading the Bible more and more and all that, it became clear that there were some problems with his views. Um, and later I then find out, which makes totally sense, that he was a Roman Catholic, you know. Um, which in the beginning, you know, you're learning and, you know, it's you don't know everything and that's... Um, and you are, you know, we are, we are called to be disciples. Anyway, it looks, I think it looks pretty good, this website. I don't know why. Well, I guess I, you know, because they're against the truth. And uh, so maybe there was too much truth on this page. I don't know. In times, at least there's some different things in regards to the Bible. Gehenna, let's see what they say about Gehenna. Gehenna. Gehinon, literally the valley of Hinon. Um, but that's the place where people is going to be cast into. The, that's, that is the lake of fire. Uh, oh, here we are. 
In the New Testament, the final destination of the wicked is pictured as a blaze, a place of blazing sulfur, while the burning smoke ascends forever. This would have been, well, just in regards of, we have to be careful in regards to this forever thing, um, because, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah was burned by everlasting fire, right? But Sodom and Gomorrah is not burning, you know, in our days. It was burned by everlasting fire, like, you know, from, you know, this fire from above. Um, but anyway, um, uh, this seems to be some interesting material. Uh, this seems to be a pretty good website, and it's mobile-friendly as well. And you can search. Uh, they also have a Facebook site, maybe. Maybe that has been banned as well. Let's have a look. Hmm. They actually do have a, and they do have the, it could be interesting uh, to ask them. Uh-oh, well, I'll just put this uh, fix, fix that and I can check it some point or whatever. Um, but they seem to, seem to have a Facebook site. So the question is, why would that website be, you know, I don't know. Um, again, there's so many things that one wants to read, and there's so there's a mountain of material out there, and they've just kept us away from the truth. Uh, and the truth is not that. What should we say? You know, the more you know, and you might, you know, the it's it's getting to a, you know, you what do you call it? It's it's um. Let's have the camera here. The thing is, you know, you have, when you first begin in regards of trying to figure things out, it's like huge. And it's, of course, it's still huge. But the thing is, in regards of figuring out things, and you begin to, you know, it begins to, you know, cleanse down. And, you know, you begin to figure out what is true. And when you know the truth, you know, then it's, you can you can trash a lot of other things, you know, uh, but in the beginning you're trying to look around, you're trying to figure out, and it is really have taken a lot of time to figure out. Um, but uh, I I really you know re how could we be so careless to not keep the truth alive, you know. Uh, I guess, you know, again, you know, Satan uses, you know, the school system, uh, the media, the government, you know, on so many levels we are, you know, we are attacked. So, I would never send my children in school, not in this state bullshit school, you know, in regards of... Uh, I could teach my children in seven days more than the more than any school could ever do, you know. And we could read some Protestant books, you know, 10, 10 years, 15 years maybe in school, and people don't know anything. They are totally ignorant. And they're, they're more damaged to them after so much. You look at those philosophers, you know, PhD. They're just outrageous. Some of them have just, well, actually many of them have lost totally sensibility. They just totally lost it. And they might have a huge education and this and that. But they just, you know, they, they just totally been brainwashed. And, yeah. Oh, it's actually five o'clock in the morning, it seems. Nearly six. Um, hmm. I guess time fl flies when you have fun, uh, or if you when you're enjoying yourself. Uh, I made a stupid thing in regards of not ending up. I didn't buy food before, you know. So I don't have. I have some. Hey, uh, I saw the cheese wagon down there, and that's always a good uh, thing to remember that. Oh, it's the Sabbath. So he usually just hold down here and uh, I would have loved to get some cheese as well, actually. But in any case, I thought, you know, I was getting, you know, I hadn't slept and, well, I just, uh, it, 
I tend to be awake in the night instead of the AI. It's really, it's just so easy to destroy the rhythm. Um, but anyway, so I didn't get to buy before the Sabbath, so I'll just keep hanging on. Um, of course, I do have a little soup thing here, you know, um, <laughs> and that's all, um, which is sad. But anyway, then, you know, it's just uh, I'll wait for the evening and so forth, so, or the sunset and all that. So, uh, and get some food and all that. And uh, but yeah, usually I would like to have food on the Sabbath so I don't think about that, right? You know, if so, it's like a good day. It's a day of rest and it should be a day of where, I, for example, get some ribeyes or something like that. But anyway, um, but you know, it would be interesting to ask uh, them about why, why Facebook would have done something like that. But I guess it's really hard to get anything in regard, um, get access to. Uh, I guess it's some some kind of you know it's it's honoring in some sense to get banned. You know, uh, where did it go? Um, okay, maybe, um, maybe it was, hmm, oh, there we go. Maybe I just need to go backward. There we go. Uh, arguments for his existence, Revelation, does it? Revelation, that's a wonderful book. This is a disambiguation page. I remember one of these Christian uh, places I'm on, on IRC or Internet Relay Chat, and this, I think it's a Roman Catholic, and just, they make everything out to be something else than what it just says. You use the Bible to interpret the Bible, you know. And yet this, and he's, I was, I was looking and reading some of the things that he had written on this page, and it's like, oh my, oh my, oh my, give me a break, you know. Um, I give, you know, you interpret the Bible by the Bible, okay? That's a very good start. You know, you just don't go haywire. Um, and yeah, anyway, virgin birth, life. But, but, you know, it looks like a pretty good site. You know, it's mobile friendly. It's really smooth uh, on my mobile, even if I'm recording. Um, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems pretty good. Uh, I guess, you know, having something in regards to Paul and all that, they will maybe attack the Judaizers. It's interesting, I was just listening to, um, and this, uh, that was uh, in, in regards to Spike. Um, and Spike is a guy that found out that evolution was bullshit, and then he became a Christian pretty much after that. So he became first a creationist and then a Christian. Uh, because, you know, that's... Uh, but anyway... Um, but he's one of these educated guys and all that. And, um, and then one of, one of the people, you know, in regards of asking questions comes out and ask if it's the Judaizers in regards of, of fixing evolution into, uh, because the Jews, you know, they believe this evolution thing in regards to the Talmud and all that, and if he knew that and so forth. I don't know if uh, the Jews have some evolution thing and all that. Of course, I wouldn't be surprised, but, you know, they went astray. The they have a lot of, you know, <laughs> uh, what shall we say, damnable doctrines, you know, pretty much. And Jesus was breaking all of the man-made doctrines. You know, every, every time he could, he was breaking the man-made doctrines. Um, not breaking the Torah, but breaking the man-made doctrines, you know. Um, but anyway, um, and people get into this, oh, he was breaking the Torah. And all. No, 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 he was not breaking the Torah because he's the perfect, spotless, sinless Lamb of God. No, no, what he was breaking was their traditions. And, uh, and they're still doing a lot of, but anyway, so he's just trying to, oh, is it, if it's the Judaizers and like something negative in regards to the Judaizers, you have to be kidding me, you know. Uh, this is a trick of the devil because you have the Romanizers and you have the Judaizers. And the Romanizers has always been against the Judaizers. You see, the Romanizers have been promoting the doctrines of, you know, the Antichrist and the Judaizers has clinged to the, to the law of God. 
Now, which, you know, and both of them are coming in the name of Christ. But who do you think is the true disciples? Hmm. Jesus said, go on and uh, teach them everything that I've taught you. Make disciples. Did he say we should be disciples of the Antichrist? No. But anyway, the Romanizer has been there from the very beginning in regards to the 4th century. I think it began with Paulus, Roman Pharisee Paulus. Um, as Jesus said, first the eatable wheat would be sown, and then the darnel, the poisonous darnel, that would be the lawless, uh, would be sown afterwards. And you see, the gospel goes out in the world in the name of Christ. Both of them, but they're two different gospels. Um, but they are very close to, they, they look like they're close together, but they're actually far from each other because one leads people away from the law and the other leads people to the law. And then I have to ask, what do you think Jesus was promoting? Yep. Anyway, Yeshua. What do you think Yeshua was promoting? Do you think he was promoting people to get away from the law or to keep the law? Yeah. And of course, he wanted people to go back to the law. So this will be interesting in regards of legalism. And if you see the book of Revelation, it talks about works, you know, that he will come back and give according to our works. So Jesus himself talks about works. So if you're saying that there's no good works and this and that, well, I think believing in Jesus and testifying for him and all that is in regards to the category of good works. It is a work in itself to believe in Christ and to stand for the truth. And, I've, you know, so, yeah, if you just do what the law uh, says, you know, the, the highest commandment is to love God. And if Jesus is God, you by law has to love him you know that's uh, by that's a decree of the is the highest commandment of the law uh, and you use both sides of the sword to you know you have to use one side in regards of finding out that you are a sinner because if you do not know that you're a sinner why 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 what 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 would you need Jesus for so they work together. Jesus is leading you to the law, and the law is leading you to Jesus. You know, regard so they're working together as a two-edged sword, and you know. So it's it yeah, it's the two-edged sword. You know, uh, working. You know, anyway, uh, legalism and Christianity is a term referring to an improper fixation on law or codes or of conduct for a person to merit or obtain salvation, blessing from God or fellowship with God with an intended misunderstanding of the grace of God. Simply put, legalism is belief that obedience to the law or a set of rules is preeminent principle of redemption and or favor with God. It is opposite extreme is antinomianism. There we go in regards to what did Jesus say? And know you that are without law, enomus. And enomus means, you know, A, not on not no or not or unknown law you that are without i think the translation could pretty much be you that are without the law but usually it's translated as you that are you know in regards of iniquity or lawlessness you that are practicing iniquity or lawlessness i think it could probably be a fair translation to say that you that are without the law now what law would that be well, of course the law of christ the law of Jehovah. Anyway, which claims that moral laws uh, are not binding on Christian beliefs. And there we go with the this and that. And then we take some of it and throw it out. And then instead of just, Jesus said that whosoever, the, you know, does the, the smallest commandments and teaches others to do the smallest commandments is the greatest in the kingdom of God. And whosoever breaks the least commandment and teaches others, you know. So it's, it's the, I can't remember it word for word, but something of that nature. Um, so, yeah. So Satan is trying to get us away from the law of God and Christ is trying to get us to the law. And of course, the closer we get to the, to the law as well in regard to the scriptures, the less likely we are going to be deceived by Satan. So anyway, and there are a few quotes, Paul here. Um, so, and we have John, and here we have James. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? 
whosoever therefore shall be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. You see, um, it's James is the you know I, it's my favorite letter. You know, and I wish we had more information of the Nazarenes, um, but sadly we uh, you know a lot of censorship has been going on and. Um, we can thank Rome for that and the Antichrist and, of course, the devil, you know. Overall, the devil um, does his deeds. I see here. And when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. I don't know if gospels, why that would be plural. But anyway, uh, gospel would be singular. And the gospel, the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. The same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Yeah. And that's you, you, when, you, when you listen to Fox's books or Martyrs, they knew. They understood it, you know. I'd rather, you know, I'd rather be killed than lose my soul, you know. They, they understood what was the, you know, in regards of the Romanizers wanting them to, to come back to the so-called Mother Church, right? You know, which is also another bullshit thing because the Mother Church was not in Rome. The Mother Church was in Jerusalem. But, you know, they're just liars and do what they do best, you know, do their father's work, the devil. Anyway, right, we'll go with the Trinity. Um, and so forward. Resurrection. But uh, besides that, it looks like a pretty good page, you know. Um, apparently, I had it in my, you know, old... Uh, but it, it does quote Paulus, but anyway. Um, policy power, hmm, how to contribute, license of text, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google. Let's see at the about. Theopedia is a growing online evangelical encyclopedia of Bible, biblical Christianity, a network of interconnected pages instantly, constantly being refined and updated. That actually sounds pretty good. Um, so this is the statement of faith, apparently. Uh, uh, basics, things, gospel. Mm -hmm. Our content is freely redistributed. Uh, Teopedia free forever and to give out. That's the thing. That's the way to do it. You know, the, the, the brothers was sharing everything, you know, and, and we have the internet and we can't even share. the. Tr and the problem is when you begin to sell the truth, it doesn't get out to people because a lot of people don't want to know about the truth pretty much. And if you're going to sell it, they <laughs> that does make it so much harder to get it into their hands because if it's free, they might have a look maybe. You know, they might by accident just have a look and and then lead them to the truth, you know. Um, but if, if it's costing money, you know, that's already, they, they, that's already, uh, you know, a closed door for them, you know, you know, you're going to sell the truth, you know, give me a break. Um, so yeah, it looks pretty good. It looks pretty good. Um... Oh, oh my, I have a little pain in my leg. Um, let's see here, if we can maybe see the finding page, settings, tools, no. Isn't, uh, no, I'm not sure how to do that. Page, oh, there we go. View page search. Well, that seems to be pretty, uh, huh. It looks so simple, right? <laughs> and yet it's not so simple, apparently. I'm not sh I guess they might not have a CSS in it. I guess they might actually just... Oh, here we have the... Okay, this is the style. So they actually have the style inside the document itself. Wow. 
So that's the whole style. Um, I don't know why they would do that. Maybe it makes it easier for the internet to... Uh, the same thing when I have pages that goes outside and all that, but I don't really see the... This is the style. What is the... Here we have the body, no script. You need to enable the Yammer script. Uh, that's, um, must take it from somewhere in regards to the information. There's a lot of class, this and that, but where's the text? Um, here we have a div class application. That's in regards to... Okay, apparently this is a Yammer script, so I guess it takes the page from maybe from another place to get the text on the page um hmm. oh well but it runs pretty good anyway it's uh pretty quick pretty responsive uh post millennialism and so forward the line hmm I wonder if they have a if they have a, a channel in regards of on internet relay chat, you know. Um, where was the pages in regards of Facebook and all that? I have Facebook, Twitter, Google, Sitemap, Polit. Doesn't really say anything in regards of a channel. Hmm. Notable theologians, I guess some of the John Webster. Oh, Webster, wasn't it that the guy that actually uh, fixed the Webster's dictionary? Nope, it uh, doesn't look like it. Oh, well. Anyway, that's all, I guess. Just interesting that uh, face boobs would... Um, would uh, actually, um, you know, close this place. Uh, they use the moral law of God. I'm not, sh you know, the, you know, the so-called apostle Paul. Yeah, well, that's again, you know, using Paul to. Every time you see lawlessness defended, people go to Paul. Every single time. Every single time. Very sad. Every time something, you know, it's always, the, you know, it's so. Jesus warned us about take care of, you know, be careful of the leaven of the Pharisees. Well, who is Paul? He's a Pharisee of the Pharisees, right? Yeah. And he's a Roman citizen. <laughs> oh, anyway. Jesus had warned us about wolves and sheep clothing that, if possible, could deceive the elect, you know. And the. So. And his. And the. And the devil's seeds would grow, uh, would grow along with the good eatable seeds unto the harvest, and the harvest is yet future. So you would expect that had to happen, right? Because Jesus is God, and He's telling the truth. So, but no, we don't want to listen to Jesus. Apparently, we want to listen to Paul, and go into total lawlessness and do all what all the Antichrist bullshit. Because if you do what the Bible tells you. You will lose salvation. Oh, what other nonsense. But it's okay to do what the Antichrist says, of course, you know. That's okay. You don't lose salvation if you do as the Antichrist tells you. But if you do it according to the Bible, you will lose salvation. What other nonsense. And I, I, I just, I, you know, you get really tired of all this bullshit, you know. And um, full of nonsense. Now, of course, we're not perfect. That's why we need Christ, you know, because we're all sinners and we need Christ. We need Jesus Christ. We need Yeshua HaMashiach, who died for the sins of the world once and for all nearly 2,000 years ago. When his body was broken, when his bread was broken, his living bread from the heavens that came down was broken and his wine poured out, his blood poured out for the sins of the world once and for all. Do this in remembrance of me, okay? It's not... The bread is not his literal body and the wine is not the literal blood. It's to do it in remembrance. And the first time he did it, he did it uh, prophetic. And now we do it to remember what he did nearly 2,000 years ago. Anyway, 
I think I should take a break. May Yehovah be with you and Yeshua be a most precious pearl. And that spirit of truth be in us all. Amen. Have a good one, all of you. Um, dum -ba -bum -bum. I'll see if I can stop this and put it on YouTube. It's a little time since I made the last video. Huh?